about it. You were maybe having some kind of flashbacks because as we're talking, I have this other dimension that just kind of floats through like I'm watching a film in ethereal ether type form as we're talking. So I can feel all this. Well, can you hear me? Am I coming through? Yeah, I can hear you well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, you well, can. I didn't think you could for some reason. Well, uh, it's interesting to hear Janet talk about that because what happened is I came on one of her radio shows and I, it struck a chord and she kept asking questions like I knew what I was talking about and I, find, I just blurted out because I was there and I was like, oh my God, now I've done it because... Here's what happened. I died as a child. I had a walk-in uh, encounter, and uh, when I was sleeping, I went up on a ship at about two to four. It's sort of standard in the business. We have certain ages. We check in with extraterrestrial, higher source, or self, or angelic realm. Mm-hmm. It's called all kind of things. But then uh, I I was okay with that, and I wrote about it in UFO Digest. So, uh, but then I died again. I I died again, or came and went, uh, however you want to say it, but this time I was in the second grade. This is how I put the story together. These are the the bumps in the road, but I died again with hepatitis. I was in St. Francis Hospital, and I saw angels in the top of the corner, so in my little mind, I was trying to compare... Uh, being on a in a big cloud with people, and they were said, you know, when I was younger, that I had to go back down to the, you know, I, I woke up in a in a field that time. This time, I'm seeing angels at the top of the hospital room when they took all my blood out and tried to clean it because I had hepatitis and they didn't know how I got it. But when they did that, it made me leave my body, and they told me no, go back in my body. But I didn't go uh, to heaven or to a spacecraft. I went. I just stayed and sat above my body and saw two angels. So that was, uh, they told me I was going to do wonderful things and all this. So I went uh, the next year, I had to get better, but I willed myself to White Sands. And uh, that was where my uncles worked at Los Alamos. And one uncle uh, took my grandmother and me. And uh, it was very interesting. I got to go into Carlsbad Caverns underground. And then over there, I did get to see my family again because they put my we were in the white sand dunes and they put my cousin to sleep a a little 10 year old boy and a 13 year old girl and they were the ones that told me look a flying saucer as it came over and it went down in a little gully between the white sand dunes and uh, they went to sleep and uh, I got to go down so uh, that was the second well that was the first time I'd been on well the second time I'd been on a spacecraft or what someone might call another dimension or how they can come and go but then uh, after that I just went on and I had extrasensory perception in my life but uh, I I never put together the story that Janet told until way way later Uh, I'd already been writing for the UFO Digest and I was already sort of out I guess when you know I was awakened through the experiences of having life after death or or out of body or near death experiences but uh, when I died again um, I guess you'd say the third time uh, our bump in the road was uh, I had my fourth child the one that just passed and she came in knowing she was extraterrestrial and I think we talked about that on the first part of this session yeah, that was great. oral book mm-hmm. and so she uh, came in and she died in my stomach and then I looked at my mother and the heartbeat stopped and that's when uh they took me to, I said, am I going to die? And the doctor finally got there because it was early in the morning. And he looked in my eyes, but he got right up to my eyes because I was already sort of out of it. I guess I just, like 60 over 40 was my blood pressure. But I was, you know, dying. So uh, I remember looking right in his eyes, and I could barely hear myself talk. And I said, doctor, and am I going to die? And he said, not if, not if I can help it. And that's when they raced the made through the lights overhead and pushed the doors open and it was real cold in the operating room and uh the anesthesiologist they had me sign a piece of paper because they were going to tie my tubes off so i couldn't have any more babies it was already prearranged because i had four by the time i was 20 i don't know how old i was in 74 22 or 3 because it's born 12, 26, wow. 51. Anyway, it was a great so they I couldn't sign because I was already too low in my body or too, you know, I didn't, ha- I couldn't move my arm. I remember the board and me trying to say I can't, 
but uh, they pushed me on the uh, over on the where they put your feet up in the stirrups, and uh, he was telling them to hurry up and give me the uh, so he could you know get cut the baby out because the baby had already flatlined, and then I was right behind him. And uh, he said, I can't. She is 60 over 40 and dropping. She's not going to make it. So, you know, I was pretty much gone. So he cut my stomach open without anything and uh, pulled the baby out, which she had the, she was blue and had the cord around her neck. And uh, I went up over head, uh, but I remember a nurse screaming, I think because she knew I wasn't dead yet, and he just cut me open right in front of her and pulled the baby out real quick because they were, you know, the baby was already dead in the room where we were waiting to go into the operating room, uh, wherever they do that with nurses. So, so they didn't uh, do any anesthesia? Oh, no, nothing. No, they, they just ripped me open and took the baby, but I was already out of, out of my, on top of my body <laughs> watching it. I'd already come out the top oh, head goodness. chakra. So I was already watching uh, from over my head, but I could still hear and see. So uh, I remember watching them and hearing the night, you know, and, and I stayed in the room. I didn't know I was dead, but I was stayed in the room watching, sort of like ghosts. You come out, but you're still involved in what's going on. So, you know, but I was watching them uh, mm-hmm. clean the baby up and she wouldn't breathe. And they took that snorkel and you know, patted her, a nurse, uh, there was a couple of nurses in there, but they took her over and uh, was trying to get her to breathe. I kept saying, breathe, breathe. I remember saying that or in my head with ESP because I don't believe your mind and your brain is your you know, your essence or your soul. So, But I was talking, and uh, I was saying, breathe, breathe. And then uh, they finally got her to uh, cry, and they I stayed long enough for them to put the ink, her foot uh, ink pad on a piece of paper, and because I saw him prick and take blood out of her heel, and I saw him uh, ink pad on a piece of paper her foot. I guess that's for the little hospital thing. But uh, they went ahead and cleaned her up, and uh, then the nurse looked at the clock. Uh, and when she looked at that clock, I zoomed off. So I went zooming like on a, a white escalator zoom. I went up and left this area and no no ship picked me up but i went through uh several layers or the stars and through the galaxy and on up and through the universe and i say several universes because i I was able to go up and go through i would say about five five levels but uh, i don't know for sure i was boom you know you you just travel but that's when i talked to people and i heard voices and it wasn't on the hospital room it was voices where I was going, but I had just about reached my destination when I could hear them. So I said, uh, wait, I want to go back. And all of a sudden, it was like a, this escalator stopped or whatever, capsule or whatever I was in as a, uh essence. And uh, it, it, the escalator slowed down. I call it escalator because of the way it was going. It wasn't, of course, through the universe. It was some kind of however we travel, light years or light speed. But... Uh, uh, it was two people talking. I would think it was a man and a woman or my guides or God. I don't know because I didn't go over where you see the pearly gates or the beautiful land or, you know, I, I just was in limbo right before the next level. And uh, the uh, they said two things, well, at least two things to me because I've sort of forgotten them over time. But I remember uh, one of them was I said – uh, no, everybody would say anything. So I said, well, what will happen to my children? And so the uh, first thing they said was, let's see, what will happen to you? They said, oh, I, nothing. And then they said, uh, <clears throat> I said, well, I want to go back somehow with them. You know, just talking ESP. And they said, well, uh, all children would be your children. And you, And they said, You'll experience more pain than you've ever experienced before, but it's talking with your mind. And I said, I don't. I could see this opening portal of gold and hurt hear people, but I didn't quite get there. So there was. It seemed like forever, but it was just a few seconds. And uh, I guess they talked to each other without me hearing it because I didn't hear the decision. But then all of a sudden, that's that feeling of going like up through space 
turned and brought me right back down. And then I came all the way back, you know, shoom, shoom, through the different levels. And I don't, I know when I was going up that the stars, the one thing I remembered was all this Akashic field energy, all this knowledge came into me. It was amazing, the most amazing thing I'd ever felt going through the stars. But coming down, I don't, I, I don't remember that, you know, of it of going back through. But I remember hitting my body, and uh, coming up off the gurney. So uh, I hit backs with so much force that it, it banged my soul back into my body. So they had to. I came back. Of course, I didn't have enough blood. My, there wasn't enough blood in the hospital because I'd lost just about. Uh, it was over six. I don't know if we held eight pints. I was only short. One and a half pints, and they didn't have enough O positive, however many I needed, six or six. It was close to the entire, but I had just enough left, uh, you know, because they'd cut my stomach open, you can imagine, and all the blood, and then I'd already been hemorrhaging. That's uh, my plus, I had placenta previa. So that's why the big hole in all the blood, I'd lost all the blood because I was hemorrhaging. From the, uh, I had fallen going in. Uh, I figured this out later that I'd fallen going in to teach baton on a wet cement at the Houston's when I was teaching children, because I had three girls and you know expecting the fourth one. So I'd fallen on my butt one day going in. So it started a slow, tiny pin, and I guess it just finally burst open. So that's why I died. But uh, anyway, I came back and that made me understand a lot about past lives they started coming in but i didn't know how to deal with it so it took me a while to learn to walk and talk again about three months but i stayed uh, in icu my mom said I, I would raise up and i remember dying and coming back where they used the paddles two or three times to keep me in my body because they were trying to get blood in me. So I stayed in there so long that it was two and a half weeks before mother said, don't you want to see your baby? But uh, my stepfather was came to ICU, and uh, they couldn't get me to talk or to do anything because I was so gone from no blood. So I never got to see the baby till they took me home. And uh, I could barely walk. It was either two months. I didn't get to bond with the baby, with Gigi. So uh, she had, she was born with a tail. I remember they clipped her tail off, and that's sort of why wow. part of, yeah, they clipped her tail off. But they, when she died, she talked to me about it and figured that that was part of their alien DNA because that was the part they couldn't get out of her tailbone or where her where they'd clipped was the part in the alien. Uh, DNA at Moffitt Cancer Hospital. They'd, they'd cleaned her blood up. You know, at this 40s, what, just recently in 2018 when she was rebirthed in May of 2017. So how do they do that? They take how all your they blood. do that? Because some other, they some clean other, it? other people, you know, I think I told you all about uh, Terry Ling being interviewed on George Nury with Cheryl Jones about that. I haven't taken the time to listen to it. But they had well, but the first said it had been, a, been the first the first scientific break of finding the DNA for the ET. Oh, okay. Uh, that I don't I don't know what the topic was. Well, they read it. it they read. Yeah, go ahead. They read they have it. To look, they, read. they have to look for something. That yep. they have to look for something in the blood. Right. And it's a whole big right. process. Do they find any alien DNA? Do you guys know? Well, what yeah, they study the, the, the. No, I'm not. I'm not a they geneticist. Study it. Right, but there's some they trigger pull it out. in it. There's some kind of. There's some kind of protein in there, I think, that designates some of that stuff. Well, they have T cells. Know. There's markers. There's markers. They can uh-huh. read every bit of it of your DNA, of course. You know how that is, and they have like four oh, numbers sure. and all that Absolutely. and the strands. But they they, they can read all that. Yeah. When she was in a cancer. Time. Try not to. I think some you people. You guys are doing I, a lot of crosstalk, and you kind of I try know. not to crosstalk so much. Yeah. Okay. So I think some of the doctors. Slow down and breathe. <laughs> I think some of the doctors that I've talked to in the past call it trash in the blood. And that's just, it means they don't know, probably. So it's interesting. I don't know. I don't know how to, that they could tell, how, how to tell that. I want to know, though. 
Well, you've 